Hello, um, this is Stavo Wang. Um, I'm so glad that I have a chance to give a presentation in DEFCON Blockchain Village 29. And um, the presentation I will give today is titled um, Towards Understanding the Unlimited Approval in Ethereum. So let's get started. Again, um, I'm Daba Wang, and uh, I'm currently a PhD student at the Monash University. And also, I am a team member at BlockSec team. As a security researcher, um, my research interests um, are blockchain security and DeFi security. Uh, and also, Han Feng is another main contributor in this project. He is a master student at Zhejiang University and also a team member of um, BlockSec team. Yeah, Jinzhou and Lei Wu supervised us in this project. They are um, professor and assistant, assistant professor at Zhejiang University, as well as the co-founders of BlockSec team. The outline of this presentation consists of four sections. First of all, um, we will mainly explain what is unlimited approval in Ethereum blockchain system. And follow up, we will present some real world incidents related to unlimited approval issues. As third section of this presentation, uh, I will show some measurement results about the unlimited approval. Finally, um, I will elaborate on the impacts of projects that you can take away. So um, what is the unlimited approval in Ethereum? Some of you might heard unlimited approval or unlimited allowance or maybe infinite approval before, and some may not. Um, for those who are not familiar with the term unlimited approval, may I ask a question here? Uh, like, what is approval? Actually, what is approval in ERC20 tokens? First of all, about ERC20 tokens, many famous tokens like DAI, LRC, USDT, USDC are all ERC20 tokens. And of course, there are many more in the Ethereum blockchain. So according to my investigation, um, I find CoinGecko, which is a crypto price platform aggregating price data for on-chain tokens. It records over 5,600 tokens following ERC20 standard. And also Uniswap, which is an on-chain exchange, records over 44,000 ERC20 token for users to trade on. So before we get details into the approval process, I'd like to mention a few important variables and functions um, built in the ERC20 token standard here. Balance of is a mapping variable to record the number of tokens owned by users. Um, as, as an example, balance of A equals to the number of tokens owned by A. And as well, allowance is a nested mapping variable. Um, also, for example, allowance AB um, equals to the number of tokens that can be transferred from A by B. As for functions, approve and uh, transfer from, um, we will show more details in the next slide. As the, approval, as the approval process in the ERC token standard, there are three main entities. Sender, which is also known as user, token, token contract and spender, which is um, platforms such as exchange uh, lending platforms. To use the service pr provided by spender contracts, such as exchanging tokens in exchange, um, the sender needs to grant the permission by invoking the approve function. With the permission approved by sender, the spender will then transfer the sender's token to launch the requested service. Approve function will apply the change to variable allowance. And as well, the change of function transfer will be applied to the variable balance of. 
Now uh, let's um, take a step further to see more details in an example. How about if a user wants to exchange ATUSDT in Uniswap? What will the process of change in both variable looks like? As you can see from the table called the state changing, the user and Uniswap have 100 tokens stored in the USDT contract. Just for example, because of course, USD, Uniswap platform might have millions of USDT in reality. And Uniswap has no allowance to transfer any tokens from the user. So the second step, while users are calling the approve function, um, the balance of both users and Uniswap will still remain the same, which is zero. Um, I mean, for, for user will be 100, for the Uniswap will remain the, remain the same as zero. But Uniswap will now have 100 allowance, which allows Uniswap to spend 100 USDT from user conceptually. Finally, come to the third step. Well, Uniswap will transfer ATUSDT from the user by calling transfer from function. Ideally, Uniswap, Uniswap's balance of USDT will increase up to ATUSDT. And at the same time, its allowance will decrease. However, from the front end user's view, it might look a bit more complicated in the real world situation. You might notice that most users will connect their crypto wallets to perform an action in the Ethereum blockchain. Now we will go through the real world process of making an approval transaction. First of all, the user will connect the wallet to platforms and then select the service with customized setting um, as wish. Like the second step, the platforms will send approval transactions to the wallet for confirmation. So after receiving the transaction constructed by platforms, the wallet will present information to users to wait for users confirmation. Next, if you if user um, agree with the information displayed on the transaction, then the user can confirm the transaction and and click the confirm button in the wallet. Lastly, the wallet will send the transaction to the network, and the transaction will be validated in the network as well. And the, after the transaction is up to the chain, um, the the transaction will modify user's allowance in the token contract. So let's go back to the question. What is the unlimited approval? Actually, um, there are three types of approval based on the approval amount. Zero approval, as you can tell, actually is the approval with value zero. Users send zero approval transaction is mainly for revoking the extra allowance proved, approved to the platforms. So after uh, sending zero approval transaction, the, you, the, the allowance of user to the platform will turns to zero. Unlimited approval is the offset way of the zero approval. The approval transaction will send with maximum amount of value or the total supply of the chosen token. Actually, they are quite similar. Both are the maximum value. As you might notice, the maximum amount could be, could be the max uint value here. As for other, as for other approvals, um, it's either because of user's customization or pro protocol's default setting. Yeah, um, after understanding the basic knowledge of approval mechanism and knowing what is the unlimited approval, I'm going to show you some like fun story of past incidents affected by the unlimited approval. 
Unicat E, Unicat and Bank Finance. Actually, Unicat is a farming protocol where users gain profits, which is mail token, through depositing Uni tokens to Unicat. However, Unicat is a fishing platform, barely, and it is there and it installs a backdoor for stealing. Another example here is Banker Finance. Banker Finance is a trading platform launched, launched in um, 2020. However, it also has, a, has an access control problem for their transfer from function. So first, some of you might heard the Unicad platform before. It is actually quite well-known incidents. Unicad actually was released right after the announcement of UniToken. It is a farming project that uses gain profits, which is mail token, by depositing their Uni tokens into Unicad. However, Unicad is a totally unaudited, audited, it's, it's not audited at all. It even set a like back, backdoor, um, backdoor function in their contract and intend to steal users deposit or approved tokens. On 16 September 2020, um, the Uniswap introduced their protocol token Uni and sent to all users who participate their service before. Therefore, actually many users gain lots of Uni tokens for free. With a very short time, like four days, um, a, farming a farming platform called Unicat came out. Like some other farming platform, Uni Unicat again takes users Uni token and promises to give them profits back. The first mission of Unicat is of course, to attract user to deposit their Uni tokens. However, Unicat is a evil cat, it's not, like it's not cute as it looks like. And the interesting thing is Unicare is totally an unaudited project. Based on that, um, a lot of users choose to trust Unicat and approve their tokens since everybody gets the Uni tokens for free at that time. Therefore, the rough decision actually direct users to lose their Uni tokens because of pre-installed backdoor of Unicat. But, uh, but once again, how, right? How's the, what's the backdoor? So what is the backdoor here? In Unicat, as mentioned before, um, there, is, there is an interesting function called the set governance. This function actually can only be called by the owners, which is, um, which is Unicat itself. To steal users Unicat, Uni, to steal users Uni token, um, Unicat only needs to set governance as Uni token address and set up data as transfer or transfer from function with um, corresponding parameters. If you cannot get the point, how about this? Unicat actually can easily um, steal all users approved Uni tokens based on based on the amount. Uh, the approved amount, no matter how much how much the user actually deposit, if users use unlimited approval at the beginning, users actually can um, lose all her lose all her or his uni tokens. How about like banker finance? Um, on seventeen June twenty twenty, the banker finance is announced. Um, this, the incidence of bank finance is more straightforward. The thing is bank finance accidentally set the transfer from function. Here they called, uh, they wrapped it with a function called a safe transfer from, but it's still it's transfer from function. They just accidentally set the transfer from function as public. By saying that um, it means that anybody can transfer tokens to their account or other address 
we are calling the we are calling bank finance safe transfer frontal function. But fortunately, um, the bank finance discovered this bug at the beginning, and the, they ran a white hat hack to transfer users' token to another safe contract. Right. Um, we probably can notice that the malicious or buggy platforms can easily lead users to lose their approved tokens. And the result will be worse if, if the user approve with maximum amount, right? Um, in addition, actually, there are there are much more here. Um, um, we also like attached the three in incidents related to maximum approval problem and that you can easily follow the link and uh, read more details about them okay coming to the next next section um in in this section we are we will present some measurement results related to um, unlimited approval for measurements um i conduct two types of investigation for the off-chain investigation um I focused on wallet and platform since users might have direct interaction with their web or mobile interface. In this investigation, um, I try to answer two questions. The first question is how is the interface designed in wallets and platforms for approval processing? So the second, do they warn users about unlimited approval at all? And for the on-chain investigation, um, we focus on platform, which, which is also known as spender, and also tokens. We also try to answer two questions in this investigation. The first question is, how are unlimited approvals distributed on the chain? And how risky are approved uh, are approved tokens on the chain to answer two questions um we mainly look at two aspects of user interface provided by both wallets and platforms for explanation we will look at whether they present clear information for approval transaction for modify for modification future um we will look at whether they enable users to customize um, their approval amount. Um, here, um, we select 15 well-known wallets in our off-chain investigation. And here, um, we will guide you through the appro approving process designed in three wallets within with a uh, with a uh, with application called Compound Platform. These three selected wallets actually, I think, will cover the, will almost cover all the metadata showed in this table. MetaMask is a very, very well known wallet. It has over 1 million downloads and over 8,000 reviews from Google Play Store. We are using Compound with MetaMask wallet. Actually, it provides pretty, um, pretty informative text to help users to double check the approval transaction. Moreover, it even provides the modification feature for users to edit the approval amount. As you can see, user can customize their approval, approval amount and the change will apply it to the will be applied to the um, transaction easily before users confirmation compared to metamask wallet um arm token has much less downloads and reviews from google play store in terms of uh, approving process in compound platform it has actually um, it has actually a specific section for users to modify their permission. I mean, this is good, right? And, uh, and also users can customize the approval um, amount. And as well, um, it provides like 
information about the token spenders, um, token spender and token sender. But actually, this is less informative um, compared to MetaMask. But I, I can say at least it provides like the modification features for users to edit their um, approval amount. Actually, um, the last the last wallet I will present is Coinbase. Um, compared to previous two wallets, um, Coinbase wallet have over one million downloads, and uh, it has the most reviews from the user. However, while I'm using it with Compound, it does not provide any information about the approval transaction, and uh, and also it does not give you any like more give users any modification features. It only requires user to confirm confirm the payment and warn about the trust. But somehow, if you click the confirm, it directly set the, the Coinbase will directly send the approval transaction to the network for verification. And then you can only view um, you can only view the details of your transaction afterwards. Badly here it charges me like unlimited approval since it's the default setting in compound platform. So um, about, about um, the platforms, the off-chain investigation for platforms, I, I select like 24 platforms based uh, on their total locked value. And uh, to better understand to better understand how's the explanation of approval in each platform, um, we defined three criteria. The first criteria is whether the platform provide a sound explanation for approval transactions on their web UI. And the, the criteria two um, is whether the platform notify users of the approval transactions existence. As the last one, um, criteria, criteria three, um, whether the platform notify user that two transactions actually are sequentially executed. Okay, and also um, in this subsection, uh, I will also go through the details of four platforms. But may may I gain, gain your attention about the two platforms here? Um, you may notice there are two special cases down below, which is um, which are co-finance and young finance. Actually, for, for these two platforms, they are actually kind of misleading users about unlimited approval. But anyway, I will go through both of them as well in, in, in the following. So, um, Compound. Compound is the fourth largest platform based on the total locked value, and it's um, it's in third, it's on third place of all uh, like lending platforms here. Actually, while I'm using the platform, the compound, as you can see, it only provides the keyword enable. And it has no explanation for the approval process at all. Moreover, it does not supply any modification feature in their platform interface. When I try to confirm the action by clicking the enable button, boom, what happened? I, I actually just got the got unlimited approval. Therefore, actually, we might we might can tell that compound does not really give too much details and uh, future for users in terms of approval. And banker, um, banker ranks um, 15 based on the total locked value. And actually it's um, in its own like fifth place among all decentralized exchanges. Well, I'm using, well, well I'm using Banker for trading um, by clicking the swap, the swap button. It gives me the instruction. And surprisingly, like it explains the, it explains the uh, approval and even gives user two options on their website interface. As you can see, with unlimited approval, 
obviously a maximum amount of tokens will be approved but with limited approval it only requests um exact amount of token for permission um now coming to the interesting case um yon fan yon finance um actually it's it's also known as wi-fi um this this platform ranks ninth based on the total log the value and it's on second place in a set class so in your in wi-fi um it combines two transactions on um, the transaction for approof and the transaction for for transfer from um they combine the two transactions with one button approve and actually it for this but while you move the mouse um on the button actually it provides very detailed explanation of approving process as you can see it even says there there is actually a sequence of the of the transaction that they will require you to um approve first then they will allow you to they will like uh, allow you to deposit in the the tokens into the platform but somehow the interesting thing happens while well, users are thinking they are only approved one usdt to the platform actually what they get is an unlimited approval this approval transaction definitely constructed by wi-fi and the button approve here it actually is pretty it's pretty misleading it misleads it's like a well confused user whether they it will probably make user to think that they only approve one usdt to the platform instead of like a maximum amount of their usdt same situation in curve finance too when users are told about approved 10 usdt for exchange it's actually an unlimited approvals I know sometimes I know you might notice that while well, I'm using the MetaMask wallet, I can actually edit the allowance. But somehow, if you imagine you some users from from Coinbase, which which um does not provide the information or modification future at all, what what they are gonna do? So I think the platform should really provide like well explanation for users so according to my case study um i think um wallets like coinbase and platforms like yon finance and the curve finance should really consider to um provide users um uh in, like enough information or provide you at least they should guide leader guide, guide the users to a uh, right right understanding of approval process instead of just maximizing the user interface with one maximum approval transaction okay now about um on-chain analysis um we will I will present the results in two different um, perspectives. First, um, I conduct a full chain analysis to see the distribution of approval transactions, and I will also show you the top top thousand top one thousand tokens and the spenders with most uh, unlimited approval. Then. Um, I attend. I also attend to find out how much risk our tokens and the platforms are taking. In specific, we analyze we analyze um, three famous stable coins and the two platforms who, which are suffered from unlimited approval. About the distribution, um, I'd like to show you the trend of. Uh, I, I like to show you the trend of approval transactions made externally. Um, just to remind you about maximum approval, um, as you can see, uh, 
as shown in this chat um, here, um, we can easily tell that the number of the unlimited approval transactions are increasing rapidly, rapidly, rapidly um, in recent years, especially after Uniswap V2 are announced. The reason I mentioned uh, I mentioned the Uniswap V2 rather than other platforms is because um, that Uniswap V2 is a Exchange is an exchange platform with a large throughput, and um, as as you can see here, on um, the Uniswap V2 is using unlimited approval as default setting. It says that it says that user only have to do the the approval once per token, which also also we can see from the from the wallet, it definitely approved the approve the um, maximum amount request the maximum approvals from the users so um maybe let us take a step further to see whether to see um whether it proves um, my thoughts here is a distribution pl plot for 1000 spenders sitting on the top of the most most unlimited approvals for X access, um, it describes like for X access here. Um, it describes the it describes like how active is the token. Um, the larger the larger value here um is actually indicates more active the token the token is. For Y access, um, it indicates the percentage of unlimited approvals among all approvals. As well, the large value of of the y axis, um, the large value of y value um, indicates the more unlimited approvals that the token are involved with. Uh, as for the size of each dot, um, it indicates the total amount of approvals. Larger the size, actually, more more approvals contained here to contained by each token. Um, now, let us take a close look at the plot, especially the red dot at the right top corner. This, this dot actually is Uniswap V2. Obviously, that from the plot, we can easily tell that Uniswap V2 dominates each dimension, no matter liveness, max approval ratio, or even the size. Therefore, this might can explain why the number of unlimited approval increased so rapidly after the announcement of Uniswap. Similarly, um, we also plot out the top, top 1,000 tokens in terms of the number of unlimited approval. Like for those um, highlight, highlighted dots, um, they are quite similar actually based on the max maximum approval ratio. But three dot um, the three dots um USDT, USDC, and DAI, they are all stable coins. And they are still like leading, like except except the maximum reach, maximum um, approval ratio, those three are still like leading leading the other other dots in terms of the liveness and the number of unlimited approval, which is the size. So as a short conclusion, um, actually we found that the stable, um, stable coins like USD, USDC, USDT, and the DAI are highly traded with unlimited approvals. And the platform Uniswap V2, it definitely dominates on other platforms here. So now let's imagine if you can find a bug in the Uniswap, like if you can find a bug in a like a, any platforms and all and and also all users are proving unlimited allowance to the platforms, what is gonna happen, right? But somehow I think, yeah, the Uniswap might, might be quite safe, um, but actually who knows, right? 
Okay, now come to that's why lead us to lead, that's why lead us to like give a risk analysis here. For risk analysis of token, we select three stable coins, like the top three stable coins like presented before. We collect one and a half years data to plot the trend of risk for each token. More specifically, we define a term called the risk rate to describe how risky of the token are. As shown, as shown in the formula, for each token, the risk um, the risky amount is simply the sum of available tokens from all token holders. Here, we actually here we only consider spendable tokens, which means the minimum value of allowance and the balance. And as for as for the risk as for the risk rate, it simply it, it simply it, it simply um, indicates the percentage of tokens that can be spent by function transfer from over tokens total supply. The analysis results of three stable coins um, show that USDC and USDT, they are actually pretty stable compared to DAI. But the DAI token here um, has experienced a lot of a lot of like up and downs through the through the through the one and a half years. Actually, for spender, um, for spend for the risk analysis of spender, um, which is also known as platforms, we simply analyze the risk amount of Unicat and Banker Finance, which has been um, present um, before in previous slides. Actually, it's pretty obvious that the Banker Finance has a considerable drop and hold, hold the peak for a very short time. Um, this is because the white hair attack may launched by, by themselves. Because bank finance um, find their bug pretty quick and they just ran or launched the, the, the white hair attack right after they discovered it. So the peak here is, was um, holding for a very short time. As for Unicat, um, there are a few up and down through two weeks. This may be because that Unicat launched the backdoor attack for many times, and the users didn't realize the backdoor before some report before someone reported in the community. So they like quite up and down here. Every actually you can you can understand the job which is. Um, Unicat, which is Unicat's running their backdoor function to steal users' money, and uh, up to up to six, six um, October, actually, while up while the community report are reporting the the, I mean, while the community re once re community reported the Unicat is a phishing platform, actually. It, the Unicat uh, risk amount just just all gone because all the users they tries to because all the user they revoked the allowance from Unicat. So let us consider now if um I mean after after the risk analysis for both um, spender and tokens may may we just uh, consider now if we are current a partition i mean participants in crypto trading like what kind of level and um, what level of risk you are taking now here we define three levels um three levels of risk that you might can take it into your consideration while you are trading in the ethereum first of all if you have zero zero allowance um, for any spenders um, no matter how many tokens you have there will be no risk and don't have to worry and you don't have to worry about stealing because you just don't have the allowance to any spender 
and this can be done by customizing on um, your approved function signature and uh, or if you just get the uh, i mean um if you just accidentally send uh, a maximum approval transactions to the to the to the chain then you can actually just send another zero approval transaction to revoke it back a second actually if your allowance is greater than zero but you actually don't have any tokens mm, i think you are potential victim by that i mean um once you are gonna buy some like corresponding tokens then boom you will you will get direct into the high risk your token might be in a very dangerous place because you have the allowance of your token to some other place and you are having it but you are not using it right if the platform are malicious or there's a bug in the platform where your allowance sit sit on then the hackers or the malicious platform can just directly transfer from your account transfer from the token uh, from your account to their account right okay that's the that's all the measurements result i'm gonna present to you now i will show some impacts that we gained from this project so first of all um why platforms prefer unlimited approval actually there are there are a few reasons i, I mean first of all two transactions actually are required for both the proof and the transfer from function right and also customized approval um, will will force uh, will force user to approve each time before trading or depositing this means that the user might need to pay more transaction fee and also platforms actually want to maximize the user experience by asking unlimited approval for once somehow actually there are there are some existing solutions like erc 777 token and the eip 2612 the ERC-777 token um, standard is first announced on 20th November 2017. Introduce term called operator. Users can actually authorize an operator to have permission to transfer their tokens with which the amount. Actually, by the operator here, it's it's actually can be can be such can be like exchange platform, lending platform or some other platforms actually with the erc77 token actually users do not have to repeatedly submit transactions for approvals and also they do not have to worry about the risk of unlimited approvals since they just don't have to do do approval at all so in short summary the users actually can perform a atomic purchase by using ERC-77 token. Somehow, actually, however, there are still some drawbacks of ERC-777 token standard. ERC-777 requires a, 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 bit, a, bit, or a bit higher transaction fee than approval. The reason is because that it uses hooks that increase the cost of each transaction. Moreover, revoking the permission from the operator still costs a fee. So, so using ERC-777 token uh, requires users to select trust. I mean, I mean, of course, then the second point is that using ERC-777 token, it definitely requires users to select trustful, um, trustful operators. I think that's why even this token standard is announced pretty early, like 2017. But there still are like no many applications compared to ERC20 token. 
Now, as for EIP 2612 proposed on 13th April 2020, a few function, um, a new function called permit is introduced here. This function has a contains a very simple idea. It allows user to modify the um, allowance variable with a side message. This means that the approval process will no longer cost transaction fee. In short summary, with this EIP, with this proposal, approving process is, is totally free. So furthermore, actually this idea is also used by Uniswap V3 for their lending provider tokens. On the other side, um, we also summarize some suggestion for both users and platforms to enhance the security for unlimited approvals. So for user, um, we recommend the, recommend the users to select wallets wisely. The wallets with allowance modification um, are always good. And also users should select platform wisely as well. Audition is always good. And lastly, um, it is always a good practice to monitor your approved token or the allowance amount. By doing that, you can simply use the two websites list below. And for platforms, um, we also have three points, um, three recommendations for platforms. Like first of all, um, the platforms should expand the proof, approval uh, mechanism and its risk for users. And the second, um, the platform should allow um, custom, cu customization on approvals for security purpose. The last, platforms should actually series, um, seriously consider the existing solutions to develop a more secure to more secure tokens instead of using um, unlimited approval for all. Now I think that's all my presentation, and here, here, here are some like takeaways. Like first, unlimited approvals are used as um, default or recommended settings by most DeFi platforms nowadays. And uh, fully understand the approval mechanism and its risk are actually necessary. So for some, for those existing solutions, um, they should really be considered to develop a tokens um, or to balance the user experience and security. Users should choose audited and uh, reliable platforms and well-designed wallets for their for their trading or depositing. And the last one is, the, is that the platforms and the wallets should provide a comprehensive explanation for the risk of unlimited approval in their user interface. By that, I mean, up if once, once, the, once the platforms and wallets give the, gives the, um, give the a comprehensive explanation, then at least the users can can make a right decision. So um, that's all my presentation today. So if you want to get in touch with us, um, just uh, I just list the, the contact details below and uh, we are more than happy to take any question or discussions. Thank you. Um, and lastly, I'm um, also thank you for, for, for your attendance to listen to my presentation. Thank you.